Hello, I'm Craig Bouchon with Home Energy Solutions Radio. I'm going to tell you something. You, if you've been staying tuned for the last two segments, we've been talking about the envelope. We've been talking about homes insulation value. We've been talking about agri balance insulation versus bad insulation. One big thing that you need to know and why it's important to spend the money on insulation and understanding that the insulation is a huge, huge has a huge payback on a very, very large energy sucking device, we could call that, Bob. That's what, true. You know, that's you know true. what that is? I'll let you say that. That's that. Okay? That's, that, that's, you know, your air conditioner, your heater, your blower system, all that, all your ductwork, it's up in your attic. And it has a huge oppression on it if you don't use certain types of technology like agribalance in an attic. Now, Bob, what are some of the things that people should look at and why it's so important that, that they understand that the air conditioning units and even the heater units are affected by the type of insulation in the attic? That's a great question because when you do something like this and have this spray foam insulation completely in enveloping basically your HVAC, there's a number of ways that you become, that start to save immediately. One is, is you can actually use less tonnage on the, the unit itself. So as an example, this is a 3,800 square foot house and we have one AC unit in this entire house. We originally thought it would take at least two and you don't have to because of the efficiency in the house. Another thing it does is that you can see all the duct work. So the duct work is where it transfers the cool air into the house. And you can envision if this was over 130 degrees, which most attics are, that has a, a direct impact on that cool air and those ducts trying to come into the house. Well, when my attic is only maybe 80 degrees instead, that is much more efficient to be able to get that cool air into the house. And then, obviously, if this area is cooler, you're not having hot air forcing its way through the ceilings into the house and becoming much more efficient from that standpoint. And folks, another thing to look at is sear. The sear value, the energy efficiency of the home and, and its ability to keep that cool condition there in the home, and when you're using this type of system, guess what happens? You don't have to have that high sear rating. Why? Because it's not having to run as often. It's not, it doesn't have to, it cycles in different ways, more efficiently. And what I like about saying this is that I see 14 sear. I see a lot of companies having to go 16 sear, 18 sear. And when you see that, let a question mark come up in your head that just maybe they're cutting a few corners somewhere. Just maybe they don't have those energy efficient options. Just maybe you should be asking them why they're not doing those things, that you can use a 14 sear and still have a very, very small utility bill. Great question. I think that's a fair question. Absolutely. I want to thank you, Bob. Again, we're out with Bob out at Miller, and that's down here in beautiful Austin. It's a great showcase. They're doing great things here. And uh, stay tuned to our next segment where we're going to talk about some of the testing procedures that happen, including how about the blower door? Oh, perfect. Very good. Thank you so much. It's Home Energy Solutions Radio every Sunday from 10 to 12 on ESPN 1530 AM.